Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Revan coming to you from Chicago. As usual, I got stuff all over the place. I got stuff all over the place, but mostly, mostly we're going to go see Judge Manning and have a little pre-trial. Uh, the, the intro, well, there's, there's a very small bit, and then there is people in court um, caught... A fantastic one. I put a link to 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 that video in the description below. <laughs> We've got a deliciously stupid Karen <laughs> in court. It's a perfect way to kick things off. And then we got a couple little things, and we and we go to Judge Manning. So let's do it, shall we? That's all, Jay. Awesome. That's all, Jay. Yeah. Okay. May I have your appearances, please. Ah, uh, yes. Tamika Horn appearing on behalf of the people, P70303. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Jabari. In court. You need to pull over. Well, y'all, give me one second. Because right. I don't, my hands are free. Pull Your over. hands are free while you're driving? No, I'm saying I'm, I don't have the phone in my hand at all. Put your hand right. Oh. I'm going to pull in this gas station. Mr. Perpet, can I have your appearance? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Jabari Perpet, P81745, on behalf of Ms. Sherelle King, who is present via Zoom and consents to proceeding in this fashion, uh, despite its limitations. Ms. King, would you please state your name for the record? Sherelle King. All right, thank you. I tried to reschedule. I had other things to do. Oh, more important than being in court? I was there this morning. I tried to reschedule, honey, and they told me I could not. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You're talking to the judge. You're calling me a honey, ma'am? Is, is that what you're doing? Is that what we're doing? You're in court, whether you know it or not. You're in court. Is this the way you conduct yourself in court? I'm Sherelle King. Ma'am, these are misdemeanor offenses where you could go to jail. Do you understand that? Understandable. All right, let me hear. Wow. I'm, I'm just asking specific questions at this point, and then I'll let you. Okay, this is part of a really good PPO that Natalie put me onto, to be honest. But I don't have all the video. I might do it tomorrow if I get the video. But here's a little clip. Go into a, a narrative of you know okay. what's been going on. Okay. Yes. Now, has there been a an act of uh, violence that's occurred recently, and if so, what was it? Um, as far as violence or as far as feeling threatened, she didn't put her hands on me. She put okay. her hands on me. Quiet, sir. <laughs> yep. To sell G. Oh, here we go. You're you're muted still. Dussel J. Awesome. Dussel J. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did you hear my introductory remarks? Uh, yes, I did. I'm just confused on what I'm contesting or deferring. Okay, well, your ticket is for operating without insurance. So either you... Uh, oh. Sorry, just looking at to see if you had had a prior deferral. I'm not seeing one. So, so if, if you ticket. had insurance at the time and just couldn't find it, don't answer. Just if you had insurance at the time and just couldn't find it, show me proof that you have insurance and that it was valid at the time. And I will just dismiss with a $25 administrative fee. If you have insurance now, but you didn't at the time, I'll still need to see the proof of insurance but I would uh, allow you to defer it because insurance is such an expensive ticket, $553 in your case, uh, the 150 is a heck of a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, so how do you want to proceed? 
Well, um, how long do I have to pay it? You would have 90 days to pay the uh, deferral fee. Okay, because um, I currently went to a psychiatric hospital and I'm unable to actually work. I'm currently being put on disability. And I did my taxes earlier and $500 were taken out of it. So I assume that went towards my ticket. Well, I don't know what it went toward or or not. I actually would be surprised if they took that out of your taxes, but yeah, I was supposed to get 700 back and I only got 200, so Well, how for today's purposes, how would you like to proceed? Do you, do you want to defer or do you want to uh contest um let's see pay the 25 dollars i mean i could contest i was supposed to be technically on insurance while i was working through amazon well they have auto insurance benefit I, hold on a second i i haven't sworn you in Okay. Uh, I would have to swear you in to hear your testimony. I am taking a look in the system, though. And I'm just going to... Uh, Sua Sponte here, make a ruling. The officer's report that I have simply references another case, and I don't have those case records in front of me. So I don't know if there's a sufficient basis for the ticket or not. And so I am just going to dismiss your infraction. You won't have to pay the court anyway, anything on this. That it's dismissed. You're, you're done for today. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a good one. You too. Thank you. Alfred Krebs. I did not see that one coming. Pay attention. All right. We're going to start with Vanessa Dukes. Okay. So this is a call from today. I saw some of the beginning. It's interesting. It's not particularly funny. It's it's kind of sad, really. But there there's some wild stuff in the beginning. I, I don't know. As we go, I don't know. You guys might have to tell me in the chat. All right. We got uh, 22 CP 213885. 204 days without indictment. Aggravated assault, possession of a knife or a firearm during the commission of a felony. And battery. There is a twenty-six thousand dollar good bond as of February the twenty-third. Preach, wow. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Haven't done a Judge Manning call in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Got goat responsibilities. In regards to Miss Duke's six prior arrest, one misdemeanor, prior criminal damage to property, prior twenty eleven. Burglary and criminal damage to property, nothing further. Go ahead, Ms. Bassett. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Dukes uh, has been in custody for 204 days at this point. I believe the last time we were here was about 100 days ago. Her bond is currently set at $26,000. Uh, her preliminary hearing was back in March. Case is still unindicted. Uh, she is 49 years old. She has lived in Georgia for her entire life. Uh, her family is local as well. I have been in contact with them. Uh, she has completed the 11th grade. She has two adult children. Uh, I believe her youngest son is a Marine. She is very proud of him. Uh, we, we also have a new fast food banning. I've never heard it before. Um, she has no felony convictions as far as i know she's not on probation and she has no other open cases um i have not received discovery in this case obviously uh, as the case is unindicted um i do think that there is more to this story and i look forward to exploring that and uh, 
getting that in evidence whenever that whenever the state uh, gets around to moving forward on this case. Um, I have no indication that Ms. Dukes will have any continuing issues with the complaining witness in this case. I don't have anything indicating any jail calls have been made. Um, she doesn't live with this person, doesn't have any reason or any need to have any continuing contact with this person. I would also note that about six months passed between the alleged incident and Ms. Dukes' arrest. Uh, she did not know that there were any warrants against her. Um, so this was a, a surprise to her. Uh, but during that six month period, there was no no continuing issues between her and the complaining witness. Um, so I think that that shows that there will not be any issues if Ms. Dukes is able to make a bond. Um, for today, Your Honor, and I don't know that she can make this, but uh, 26,000 is too much for her, for her family. Um, so I would say that that is per se unreasonable for her. Um, so I would ask for a $10,000 good bond at this point. All right, Mr. Malkin. Thank you, Your Honor. Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening, all. The victim is present on the Zoom call. Her name is Samantha Jones, and Your Honor can see her. She did want to be present, but did not want to address the court. The victim is not opposed to bond, and of course, Ms. Dukes already has a bond. The state would request a $15,000 bond with an ankle monitor and no contact provisions and the usual other conditions. Thank you. She's going to live, she's going to live in Fulton County, Ms. Bassett? I believe so, Your Honor. Okay. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with the 24-hour curfew. And people, when I say 24-hour curfew, it means you can do these things. You can... Uh, Go to court, see your lawyer, medical appointments, and work, and basic life necessities. But you have to let the ankle monitoring company know where you're going, how long you'll be gone. If you don't, it'll be a violation of your bond condition. So make sure you know. And also, employer, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Stay away from all Jersey mics. Can't go to any Jersey mics. And no further contact whatsoever with Samantha Jones. That's a bummer. I, I, I kind of like Jersey Mike's. I haven't had one in years, but it's it, it it's pretty tasty. It's simple but good. Ten thousand, two thousand, one thousand. Ten thousand, two thousand, one thousand. Best of luck to you, ma'am. It's two hundred four days without indictment. Best of luck. Thank I've already placed it in the email. Thank you, Your Honor. And that would uh, conclude my business with the court this evening. May I please be excused? Uh, yes, ma'am. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. All right, let's see. Tarion Blanky. Tarion Blank. All right. We got 23 Bostic uh, 22 CP 208985. 386 days without indictment. There was a $3,000 good bond on robbery by sudden snatching as of January the 19th. Great. Wow. Only prior Georgia arrest two in Kansas, one in Missouri. Nothing further. Aww. All right. Thank Go ahead, Ms. Kennebrew. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Blanky is in custody and has been in custody for 386 days without an indictment. His current bond is a $3,000 good bond. He is 21 years of age. He, <clears throat> excuse me, does have a valid address that he can reside at. He did graduate from high school. He was working at Chipotle prior to being arrested. He was arrested on May 12, 2022. He had a preliminary hearing on September. Notice she never has to ban anybody from Chipotle. September 20th of 2022. At this point, Your Honor, we're asking for a UJR. The state has failed to indict this case and to move it forward. He has been in custody again 386 days. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we are just requesting a UJR. All right. Uh, so is he going to live in Fulton County? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Malkin. Thank you, Your Honor. The victim is not opposed to bond in this case, but we would ask that he post a $1,000 bond. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You can have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Like I said before, court, medical, attorney visits, basic life skills, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment schedule, the exact location oh, yeah. you're going to be working. You have to provide an address upon release. Right uh, and previously, that was a hold. But any of you folks, if there's a hold, you have 48 hours to have that ankle monitor placed on your ankle. All right. 
And also, you'll need to stay away from all MARTA property, all MARTA stations. For instance, if you walk past a bus stop, you can't sit down on the bench. That's MARTA property or MARTA stop. You have to walk past that, sit down on the curb, and tie your shoe. No further contact with April Jules, J-U-L-E-S. We'll do a $1,000 good bond or 10% through the sheriff. Either one, whichever one he can do. Best of luck to you, sir. All right, Curtis Reed. Okay, we got position 24, Bostic, 22 CP 211888, Curtis Reed, 277 days out of indictment, one count of aggravated assault with a $40,000 good bond as of December the 14th. Free trial. Nine prior arrests, but most of the cases were dismissed. FTA in 2011, nothing further. All right, go ahead. Yes, Your Honor, uh, Attorney Lang, I'll be handling this uh, case going forward. It's not just for today. Uh, Mr. Reed is 33 years old. He's lived in Georgia his entire life. He has five children, four daughters, one son. He has a high school level education. He also completed his GED. He was working at the Guest Inn as a maintenance worker at the time of his arrest. He is hopeful he'll be able to return to that position upon his release. Based on the information presented, the amount of time he spent in custody, he's been in custody since August 30th, 2022, with the bonds he's unable to afford, I'm asking the court to a bare minimum have the bond twenty thousand, but I'd ask the court to consider ten. Where, right, Mr. Malkin? Thank you, Your Honor. The state would consent to the defense's request for a twenty thousand dollar bond. The victim is present on the Zoom call and would like to address the court, please. And her name is Tylonda Kyles, and. Mr. Reed is accused of shooting her in the stomach. All right, Ms. Kyles. Ms. Kyles, are you on? Okay, th this gets this gets real heavy real fast, but it's interesting. Ms. Kyles, you have to turn on your camera, please. Um, one second, I just be. If start, start your camera, take yourself off mute. All right, can you take yourself? Can you raise your right hand? Okay. You swear for a testimony you're about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Malkin. All right, you can lower your hand. Good evening, Ms. Kyles. If you would please state your true and correct legal name. My name is Tylonda Ebonica Kyles. Okay, Ms. Kyles. And what did you want to tell the court about this situation? I really feel like he's incarcerated too long for something that he did not do. I had the gun on me in my pocket. He did not have the gun in his hand. He did not run up on me. He did not uh, shoot me with his hand or nothing like that. The gun went off on me. I ended up falling and the gun went off on me. The gun was on me in my pocket, in my jacket pocket. He did not have it, a gun at all. All right. Did you tell the police that he did shoot you? No, I was in the hospital and, uh -huh. and I was under, I really know, I really can't even tell you who came to see me, um, to be honest. Um, so whatever I did say, she, she showed me a picture of him. Give him a break. I shot myself, judge. Mm hmm. And that was it. She just asked me, was this the character that everybody's looking for? I did not, I was not the one who called the police. Um, someone out there on, on the scene where it happened, they called the police. And I just remember going to the emergency room. And they checked me. It was a clear room. It went through my vagina and came out my buttocks. Um, he was taking care of me after the situation. We was together again after the situation. Um, I never felt like I was threatened enough to say, oh, let me press charges or, or anything like that. When the officer came into the hospital room, all she had was a picture of him and asking me, was this the guy? That's it. Did nobody ask me any more questions other than that? And honestly, right. I can say that my, I know for a fact the gun was in my pocket in my pullover. So still at the end of the day, I couldn't just out I would say he shot me unless I was just under the influence or something. But I know for a fact she showed me a picture of Curtis mm -hmm. Reed and I, she asked me was that him and I said that was him. I had right. given her information about it. Well, I'm sorry you were shot. However, it occurred. What is your relationship with Curtis Reed, please? We're married, um, but um, I would say common law married. We have not went to the courthouse at all, so we've been together for about six to seven years. Okay, all right. Slash, 
we never we just really never got to get to court get to the courthouse all right very good it sounds like legally your boyfriend girlfriend and not legally married but right. okay and do you consider yourself still together with him yes i do i've been talking to him since it, since he got in car we were staying together when he was working at the guest in hotel we were staying together he was on the way to work when they locked him up so right. he had just left me in the hotel room because I, pre- I was pregnant again are you afraid of him no sir i'm not okay and you're not in fear for your safety or safety of anybody you know if he gets out of jail no sir i'm not and no everybody's actually getting on me like go do an affidavit go do something to get him out like like get his ass out of jail excuse my language but this they've been cussing me out like i can just pull a string or something and uh, last time I spoke with somebody was September, and they was telling me that the state had picked it up, so the affidavit wouldn't have had work. Because I've been, try- I've been one, I've been telling his court attorney, a lawyer, Mr. Houston, to meet up with me so that I could do an affidavit for him, or I was going to go to the library and print one out and get it notarized before his court date. But it came kind of fast for me. Okay, so, so the the warrant states that it's written by the police officer states that a witness said that he saw mr reed pull out a gun and shoot you are you saying that the witness was mistaken your honor i'm going to object to that question at this time what's the basis for the objection the victim being present is testifying as to bond factors this is not an evidentiary hearing and we're now asking about the evidentiary means of the case what was or was not stated to officers the purpose of this is for the victim to give their uh, preference as far as bond goes. Oh, I don't know. She's talking about, she's saying it didn't happen like that. However, it contradicts what's said in the warrant that a witness said that it happened. Understood, Your Honor. I'll withdraw them. Yeah. And I've actually spoken to the witness. All right, Ms. Um, Miles. Yes, Ms. Miles, guns don't just go off. No, so I had the gun in my So my you, pull, you pulled the trigger and shot yourself. I mean, the gun was on, it wasn't on safety because of the, the area of the neighborhood. So somebody had to have pulled the trigger, Ms. Kyles. Who pulled the trigger? And nobody pulled the trigger. No, oh, ma'am. I would say no, I shot my trigger. Ms. Kyles, Ms. Kyles, with all due respect, triggers have to be pulled. Right. In the entire history of a gun, triggers have to be pulled. They don't just go off. That, that's right. just not what happened. So but he did not have one. If you say that, he did not have the gun in his hand. The gun yeah. was my gun. It was on me in my pocket. Period. It does it either way it goes. You say the gun don't go off. Okay, I agree with you. But when I fail, no, I'm not Man. gonna argue with I'm not gonna argue with it. Anything else as far as bond goes? Ms. Collins, has anybody asked you to to come in and say this to the judge? No, sir. I haven't been speaking with anyone. Okay, no, 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 no. further no further questions. Thank you, Ms. Kyle. Mr. Ms. Lang may have some questions. Anything, Mr. Lang? No, Your Honor. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Talonda Kyles, Roosevelt Walker, Solman, S U L M Y N Bradshaw. You're gonna have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a twenty four hour curfew. <clears throat> court, lawyer, medical employment, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Previously, it said you must reside at 2051 Flat Shoals Road in Decatur, Georgia. So you're going to stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. $20,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. Jonathan Dry. All right, it's... uh. One on the add-on, Bostic 21 CP 200689, Jonathan Dry. <clears throat> Excuse me, 708 days without indictment, arson in the first degree, criminal damage to property. As of 12 8 2021, there's an $8,500 good bond. Preach! Three in Georgia, rest in North Carolina and Indiana. Crowd breaking in the inner and attaining property by false pretenses. A 2020 battery family violence and 2020 simple battery. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Bostic, could you repeat that? I didn't get any of what you just right. said. Hold on. Everybody, gentlemen, everybody keep your seat. Sit your head up. Put your head up. Sit straight up and pay attention. Shut the door. If you got to go get your meds, step out, get your meds, and come back. This is more important than whatever's going on behind you. Keep your seat. 
I don't think Four, three south, booth three. What do you? What did I just say? It's gonna get worse than it did. Unless it's your meds, get your meds and come right back in. But Go I, ahead, yeah. uh, Bossy. The court reporter <laughs> didn't hear. mind. Three prior arrests in Georgia, arrest in North Carolina, Indiana, prior breaking and entering, O2 obtaining property by false pretenses, battery, family violence in 2020, simple battery, family violence in 2020, nothing further. Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Dry is 41 years old. He was 39 when he was initially arrested and taken into Fulton County custody. As Your Honor stated, he's been in custody for over 700 days. He is two weeks away from hitting his second year in Fulton County custody. This case has had a preliminary hearing. It's had bond hearings. The bond is currently at a point where Mr. Dry is still able to un or still unable to afford it. He's lived in Georgia for the last three and a half years. He has his barber's license. He is a licensed barber who believes he'll be able to find a job relatively easily upon release, but he's not been able to set up any interviews or anything, obviously, while he is still in custody. He graduated from high school in North Carolina in 2000, as well as from Fayetteville Technical Community College. He was there for two years. That's where he completed his barber's license. He also got his associate's degree in business. Um, Looking at the information in this case, Your Honor, looking at the amount of time he has been sitting in custody on this case without indictment or anything to that effect, I am asking the court for a significant reduction in bond. I am asking the court to leave this case in a $1,000 bond after today, UJR on the criminal damage charge and $1,000 on the arson charge. Go ahead, Mr. Malkin. We'd request either a UJR to the hold, he's got a decab hold, or a $5,000 bond. All right, so it's 717 days. I'll add this to the email. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Keisha, K-E-I-S-H-A-L-E-S-A-N-E. -E -E. Stay away from the spectrum on Spring at 1270 Spring Street. I think I already said no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment schedule, and the exact location you'll be uh, working. Also, previously, I guess from prelim, it said you had to reside with your sister at 8403 Lisbon Road in McDonough, Georgia, 30253. So you'll stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. Court or to see your lawyer. Count one, UJR through the jail. 5000 for count two. Best of luck to you, sir. Your Honor, two things very quickly. I apologize. Um, number one, that address, I do not know if that address will be a good address anymore. That was at his preliminary hearing over a year ago. I don't know if his sister still lives at that address. Could I ask there just be a requirement that to get out, he submit an address? I talked to him about that today. He's going to call family today and find out his permanent solidified address. So how did, they, how did Borski come up with must reside with sister? Because that was the address that I had back when I did his preliminary hearing in front of Judge Borski. Is that um, her address now, sir? Thumbs up or thumbs down? She lived in does she live in Fulton County? All right. So yeah, provide the address um, upon being released, but still stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. I want to make sure there wasn't a certain reason. Well, I'm sure you understand that. It was put on there since I wasn't there, but that'd be fine. All right. Best of luck. See, you, sir, you can leave the booth. James Powell. Uh, Is there one? Hold on a second. I may have a couple more. Uh, wait a minute. One second. That, that's complicated. That may have been waived. There are a lot of factors that I don't have, but, but not per se. It's not. And that's no. everybody in comp. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Powell. 22 CP 213153. James Powell, 232 days without indictment, $100,000 good bond as of January the 17th, 2023. Terroristic threats and acts, aggravated stalking. Free. Ah. Boston. In regards to Mr. Powell, a simple battery, family violence, two counts, criminal trespass. Family criminal trespass, 2020 violation of a protective order and battery family violence in 2019. Currently on probation, aggravated assault, family violence, firearm during simple battery family violence. Sentence 10, 19, 10, 11, 19, five years confinement, 15 years probation, nothing further. All right, go ahead, Ms. Kinnebrew. 
Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Powell has been in custody for 232 days without an indictment. That's just over six months. His current bond is $100,000. He is 72 years of age. He does have a valid address in Fulton County. He did attend Michigan State. Um, he is the proud father of four children and two grandchildren. He's retired, so he doesn't have a set in. He's 72? Come on. Come on, Grandpa. We, we, we got to stop uh, the gangster activity. Income. Right now, his bond is set pretty high. Um, he was arrested on October 13th of 2022. He had a preliminary hearing on January 17th of 2023. So we're well into the six months and he has not um, been indicted, Your Honor. So we're asking for a bond not to exceed 25000 on both counts. So 25000 total, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Malkin. Thank you. The state is requesting 50,000, 25 on each count. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You can have an income monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment, basic life necessities. As long as you supply the place of employment schedule and the exact location you're going to be working and proof that you have a job there. Uh, Your Honor, one additional thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot to mention that I did provide a waiver of prosecution that was submitted by the complaining witness to ADA Hutcherson. Um, and I can also forward that to the ADA um, Malkin. But she does not, she is not in fear of her life from this person and she does want him to get a bond and to be released. My apologies. No, that's fine. I understand. I think one of these is where he actually violated one of my uh, temporary protective orders. So I remember him. Uh, Let's see, stay away from 1151 Windsor Street in Atlanta, Georgia. No further contact with Sherry Hunter. No further contact with Chris Franks. 25000 each count. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. And I've added this to my email already. All right, Demetrius Williams. Uh, Ms. Gowdy is position 16, Bostick 22, CP213481. 220 days. Okay, this is the last time I do a video where someone sh shoots themselves in the private. It, it just, it, it brought me down. I'm not going to lie. Without indictment, VGCSA, possession of methamphetamine, possession of a knife or a firearm, or a commission of certain felonies, knowingly driving a motor vehicle on suspended or canceled or revoked registration, no insurance, driving without a valid license, defective or brake lights or turn signal. Free trial. And there's a $19,250 bond as of 131. Sorry, boss. Working for arrest, a couple of arrests for probation violations, three FTAs. Uh, misdemeanor battery in 08, currently on probation 22 SC 180892, sentence just a little bit less than a month ago, 5323 controlled substance, two meth, one year confinement, four years probation, also sentenced to, for an arson, 14 SC 129650, <laughs> sentenced to 2515, four years confinement, 16 years probation. Nothing so we can all get behind. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Gowdy. And yes, Your Honor, before the court is Mr. Williams. He is 37 years old. As the court is aware, he's been in custody now for the past 220 days, Your Honor. He has previously already come before this court to ask for bond reduction. Additionally, he had his prelim back in January of this year, Your Honor. And since then, he has not been indicted. Um, I represent Mr. Williams in his 22 SC matter in front of Judge DeFour, Your Honor. Prior to us taking that plea, we did reach out to the DA's office to ask them to consider accusing the CP case, Your Honor, so that both cases could be pled out at the same time. Unfortunately, the case was not accused by the DA's office, which did not allow Mr. Williams to take a plea to both cases at that time. He was willing and ready to take a plea at that time to both cases. And in particular, we already had a uh, inpatient drug program already set up for Mr. Williams for him to go to directly after taking his plea, Your Honor. That program is still available for him. It is the Hope House program, Your Honor, here in Fulton County. Uh, because it is inpatient, he would be residing at that program. I do have an acceptance letter from the director of that program, Judge. Uh, what we are asking for, because the state did not accuse the case, because he was not able to handle both of these cases back in May of this year at the same time, we're asking for a significant bond reduction so that he be, would be able to afford um, the services of the bail project and then be able to go to that inpatient program. Judge DeFore was also made aware of the fact that he 
wanted to see PKs accused and wanted to um, attend the inpatient program, Judge. As it pertains to bond, we're going to ask the court to consider the following. Um, there are, I count, four driving offenses, Judge. We're asking for all of those to be EGRs through the jail. Um, there's 8,000 on the possession of methamphetamine. He just called out to a case for possession of methamphetamine. He has admitted and has spoken openly about the fact that he has addiction issues and addiction concerns, Judge. So we're asking for that to be reduced from 8,000 to about 1,000, and we'll ask for the firearm to not exceed 5,000, Judge. That's our request at this time. Thank you. Mr. Malkin? The state would request a $10,000 bond. He was on probation for that arson case, a lengthy sentence in that today. case. Thank you. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay out of College Park. Uh, no driving unless you have valid driver's license, insurance, and registration. So no driving at all until you have a valid driver's license, registration, and insurance. Uh, 2000 5000 150 150 150 UJR jail. 2000 5000 150 150 150 at UJR jail. Best of luck to you, sir. I just added that name to my list, Ms. Gowdy. Ms. Gowdy, are your uh, motions tonight the same as they were last time? Like they've been on pretrial for the four months, et cetera? Um, four out of the five, yes, Judge. And so um so by Bossy to go ahead and draft orders for those four. Okay. And the fifth one is slightly different. So we'll okay. wait till the end of the calendar. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, Sterling Forest. Position seven, Bostic two two CP two one 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 three nine. Three hundred and four days without indictment, eight thousand dollar good bond as of November the fourteenth, twenty twenty two. Arson in the first degree. Preach. Um arrest in Georgia has a, a whole indicator for arson. Nothing further. All right, go ahead, Mr. Cho. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Forrest previously uh, was accepted into Hope House. Oh, Stony Cho. Uh, there are two holds house. outstanding <laughs> that I'm aware of, and so we're not able to get him there. The court would consider doing a UJR and a detainer um, we'd ask the court to consider that UJR to the holds, a detainer to bring him back to Fulton County so that once the holds are resolved, um, we can place him into Hope House. I do have a letter of acceptance. Um, Thank you, Bubba. So this is one of those situations, Your Honor, where uh, uh, there's not much left we can do until... Um, proceeds further down the procedural path and so uh, there is a good reason why Mr. Forrest was accepted into Hope House those reasons still remain oh, and um, that that's the situation good. we're in uh, I believe at this point we are verging very close to um, per se, violation of constitutional right to a speedy trial. Um, <laughs> would ask that you add Mr. Force to the list. What the hell can I argue? I think we're approaching a constitutional file. I mean, we are, we aren't. Or, or you, 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 if you, if you feel like that, that's your argument. Let's say it with some vigor. All right. Say it like you freaking mean it, Cho. Come on. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Malkin. I like Cho, too. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, the state's very concerned about the hold indicator for another arson charge. The state would request a $5,000 bond. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 383 Irvin Street in Atlanta, Georgia. You're going to have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment, or any program that Mr. Cho gets you into. And employment, as long as you that. supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, <laughs> schedule, exact location you're going to be working. You also have 48 hours to have that ankle monitor placed on your ankle once you get released from your other holds. So we'll make it a $3,000 good bond. Maybe you can get down the street and get back in here. Best of luck to you, sir. And I've put it, just put that in my email. All right, Thank let's you. see. Carlton Phillips. Carlton Phillips. No, Carlton Phillips. What about Frederick Bryant? All right, position three, Bostic 
23 CP215258, 145 days on indictment, robbery by force, simple battery. $10,000 split bond as of January the 9th with no bond on the robbery by force. Preach! 26 prior arrests, capital offense in the 80s of prior robbery, misdemeanor, couple arrests for probation violation, uh, criminal trespass damage. 22823 open case 21 CP 199735 for robbery open case 21 CR 002259G for battery nothing further all right go ahead Ms. I'm here your honor um I'm here on behalf of Mr. Young um in regards to Mr. Bryant Mr. Bryant has now been in custody for 145 days and a continuous no bond status he did have a Okay, now this is in my head. I thought this was from today. Does anybody know? Is this an old one? I haven't seen it before. Preliminary hearing back in February in front of Judge Drake. Um, at this time, Mr. Bryant is 55 years old, a lifelong resident of the metro Atlanta area, high school graduate, and did attend some college. Um, prior to his incarceration, he was gainfully employed. He worked in uh, car detailing. Um, as well as some local security jobs. The address that uh, you see reflected in Odyssey is an address that has been verified. That address is uh, Mr. Wow. Bryant's sister's address, and that has been verified with her. Looks like a crazy uh, PPO tomorrow. Prior to today, Thank the you, attorneys Lord. working on this case were able to secure Mr. Bryant uh, placement in a program. However, due to how long he's been in a, no, in a no bond status, that position has now come and gone. So we're hoping that with a Thank bond you, today, we would be able to reconnect with that program and hopefully send Mr. Bryant on his way, given that um, it has now been so long and this case has still not been indicted. Um, at this time, I'm asking your honor to set um, a bond not to exceed $5,000 on the whole case. Thank you, Judge. Go ahead, Mr. Malkin. Thank you. The state would request a, I would say a fifty thousand dollar bond total. Do, Forty on the robbery, ten on the simple battery. Considering that Mr. Bryan already has a pending open robbery case, as well as his other criminal history. Thank you. No drugs unless prescribed. No alcohol. No weapons. No further contact with first name K A A L E A S E McCray M C C R A Y. Stay away from 960 Oakland Avenue. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working in any um, program that Mr. Young gets you into, you can participate in that. Uh, 20,000 count one, 8,000 count two. Best of luck to you, sir. Get laid the booth. What about Carlton Phillips? And yet... All right, there we go. Position 18, Bostick, 23, CP, 216515, 98 days without indictment, no bond as of February the 25th, terroristic threats, felony obstruction, aggravated assault. Free. Four prior arrests, two felonies from the 90s, uh, two misdemeanors, nothing further. All right, go ahead. Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Phillips, 50 years old. He's lived in Georgia for the last seven years of his life. Uh, he graduated high school in 1989, then completed some college as well. He has multiple children and grandchildren who live in the Georgia area as well. Um, at the time of his arrest, he was collecting SSI due to a number of MH and physical health diagnoses. Based on the information presented about his history, being 50 years old with only four cycles, uh, his last two felonies being from, the, or his only two felonies being from the 90s, um, I also believe at this point he has been in past 90 days, so he is entitled. His felonies are from the 90s. They're like vintage and cool now. It'll do a bond today. I'm asking the court to consider a total bond in this case, not to exceed $10,000. Good. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Malkin. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, that does not seem terribly unreasonable, given what we've heard. The state would consent to that. Is that 10000 total? Yes, 10000 total, yeah. Yes. Three, three, and four. Three thousand, three thousand, four thousand. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Brian Soto or Valencia Foreman. Stay away from 2484 Calvin Avenue. 
You have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, Stop. lawyer, medical employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, like proof of employment schedule, the exact location you'll be know. working, and also basic anybody. life necessities. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. What about Ashard Williams? Ashard Williams. No Ashard Williams. What about? Quentin Wilson. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's see. Possess, let's see. Uh, 23 CP 2157, excuse me, 474. 139 days without indictment, possession of a firearm or knife by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm or knife during the commission of a felony, possession of cocaine, public indecency, a willful obstruction, misdemeanor, no bond as of January the 16th. Freaks. Wow. Number two on the add-on. Currently um, on probation for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon firearm during firearm by 523-16, six years confinement, nine years probation. Nothing further. All right, go ahead, uh, Mr. Malkin. All right, let's see. Should the defense attorney go first? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, Mr. Singleton, I'm so sorry. I don't even know who you are anymore. You barely show up. It's good to see you again. <laughs> I completely, yes, go ahead. He's, he's silent but deadly when he, when he works. Go ahead. When he gets here and starts working. Go ahead, Mr. Singleton. Sorry about that. Thank you, Yana. Uh, Mr. Wilson is 44 years old, Yana. Um, has lived his entire life here in the state of Georgia. His entire family lives here. Um, he does have one child that is uh, 21, year old, 21 years old that he's in contact with, that I've been in contact with plenty of times uh, since he's been incarcerated. Um, he does have his GED uh, for work. Uh, he was working, doing laundry and housekeeping at the Marriott. And he does believe that that job is still available to him upon his release, Your Honor. Um, he is currently on a no bond status. Um, his address on file is his valid address, Your Honor. At this time, we are asking for a reasonable bond to be set. Um, we're asking for a split bond, Your Honor. We're asking for a UJR on the two misdemeanors. Um, 5,000 on each uh, firearm charge, Your Honor. I believe that is usually the minimum that the courts will consider doing. And then for the possession charge, Your Honor, we're asking for UJR on that as well. He's already had his preliminary hearing on March 7th of this year, where the case has been bound over, but still no indictment, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Go ahead now, Mr. Malkin. Thank you, Your Honor. Because he was on probation for various weapons offenses at the time of this offense, as we heard from pretrial, the state requests a total bond of $25,000. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 639 Morosco, M-O-R-O-S-G-O, -O -O Drive Northeast. You have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, in the exact location you're going to be working. 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 1,000, and 1,000. Five, 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 one, and one. Best of luck to you, sir. <laughs> and position one, Prometheus Walls was indicted, right, Ms. Pinto? I thought it was just one charge, one That's position. Right. Not just position one. I don't think two was indicted, was it? Ms. Right. For some reason, one of the cases was indicted, but not the other. So position one, should, I think, was the one indicted. Correct. Yes. All right. So, Mr. Walls. Yana, that actually concludes my business. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Have a good evening. Good to see you. You too. All right. So uh, one of your cases, sir, is indicted. Ms. Pinto can chat about that with you later. And on that one, there's still that 31 unless they added some charges or did something different, there's still the $31,000 good bond on that. So I'm not sure what your indictment was for exactly. But I got 22 CP 212386, Prometheus Walls, 259 days without indictment, burglary in the first degree. There's an $18,000 good bond as of March the 1st, 2023. Preach! Wow! 
Judge, the, it's those two cases, and then there was another case that was indicted, and then he has another open case, 21 CP 205171, 24 prior arrests, three felonies, convictions, one arrest for probation violation, arrest in Michigan, nothing further. All right, go ahead, Ms. Pinto. Thank you, Judge. Um, Mr. Waltz has been incarcerated 259 days. Um, he's 49. He turns 50 on the 11th of this month. Um, he does have a bond on the indicted case, um, which I have. I had. I thought it was 31,000 as well, but then it looks like it's 34,000. Regardless, we are, of course, still asking for a reduction on the unindicted case. He has been deemed eligible for a bond judge, so now it's just a matter of trying to find one that is actually reasonable for someone in his position. Um, we do have a good address for him where he'll reside on Pierce Road. Um, if released, that's where he lives with his wife and his mother-in-law and then um their children he does have five children um ranging in age from 29 to 10. i mean they did have a cuban sandwich that weekend that's about as close as close to this rumor as it's got <laughs> and then he has um and then his wife also has children so there's seven children total six grandchildren total they all live in the Atlanta area. So he has strong ties um, to this community. He graduated from Northside High School in 1991. He also has a uh, forklift certification and a mechanic certification. Um, he unfortunately was unemployed at the time of his arrest due to an on-the-job accident. Um, he His last job was working as a forklift operator at DS Foods. But then um, he also did some landscaping, and he has spoken with them recently in May, and they said he can return to that job when he gets out. So those are further ties to the community. Um, I don't understand why one case was indicted and another wasn't. Regardless, he's been in for a significant amount of time and only recently has seen this movement, um, given that he has a it's a pretty high bond on the unindicted or on the indicted case judge. We would ask for a reduction down to five thousand on the unindicted case. All right, Mr. Malkin. Thank you, Your Honor. I have some familiarity with Mr. Wall's case, and we're going to ask the the court not to do anything with the bond, but to leave it the same. And this case involves. Mr. Walls allegedly going to the victim's residence on four separate occasions and on at least two of them, possibly three, shooting into the house and entering the house on one or two of the occasions. And on the fourth time that he entered, he was arrested in the house as he was carrying out a microwave from the house. The victims had to move out and are terrified of Mr. Walls and what he might do. They were home when he allegedly shot into the house. And so the case was- Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. Was recently indicted on Tuesday for multiple counts of aggravated very- assault, criminal damage in the first and other oh, related shit. charges Shooting for- Two sets of victims, the the family in the one house and then gentlemen that live next door that used to be Mr. Walls' employer and who's known him for about 15 years. So when I put the CP number for the number two case into Odyssey, the indicted case comes up. So I think that number two is part of number one. As far as the indictment, it's a it's a fairly broad indictment. It's got a lot of counts. I think it's got at least about a dozen uh, counts, give or take. And a second case was also indicted, which is a drug case, which is not related to these allegations. 
but I believe it was a prior offense. So because of the danger that we believe Mr. Walls presents in in committing new crimes as well as danger to the victims as well as risk of intimidation of witnesses the state is asking the court not to uh, not to change the bond at all in fact the in, in the, it's in the works already for some grand jury warrants to be issued based on the indictment based on additional new charges that were not included in the warrants that we already have Six North, Booth One, get your head up. All right. So I don't. So without seeing that indictment list to see what you know, if this was included, I, I don't know, Miss Pinto. So, but here we go. So, because usually I email back if I see something, but I forgot to email back today and see if this was indicted with it. So I apologize. But no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from Six Twenty Five Greenbrier Way in Atlanta, Georgia. Stay away from the city of South Fulton. No further contact with Johans. Y-O-H-A-N-C-E, Mitchell, and Ryan, R-Y-A-N, Adams. You'll have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment, as long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, the exact location you're supposed to be working, and obviously basic life skills. If there's a hold, you have 48 hours to have that, mon that ankle monitor placed on your ankle. But kind of in line with what I usually do when they show up again, unless it's something horrible, I kind of chip at it a little bit. Um, so I'll reduce it to $15,000 good bond, but that doesn't release those other holds from you, sir. And I can't tell you what else could happen. Best of luck to you, and sir. Judge, you can judge, I'm so sorry. Um, he wears work boots for his job. Is there any way we could do the wrist ankle, the wrist monitor rather than well, an ankle so monitor? I understood that's kind of up in the air, whether or not it's there. If you can find out if they've worked out the contract things, let me know and I'll be going to amend it, but that's now, is there, I was under the impression they, they were. Yeah, but now it's allegedly back up in the air if it applies to the Orca stuff at night. Uh, anything uh, like other Ms. Holds, Lewis, do we have any work. update on that? I know uh, Ms. Gaston isn't on here tonight. Ms. Lewis, do you know? She must not either. But um, see what? I will check up. I will, I'll email Ms. Uh, Gaston and copy you and Mr. Malkin. So if it is, then we can amend it and change it. Okay. Thank you, Judge. And okay. Your Honor, can, can we just add to the no contact, not just Johans Mitchell, but his entire family and residents? Oh, okay. Okay. In, in that's a 625 Stonebriar? I believe so. Yeah. So no further contact with Johans Mitchell or any relatives or people that live at, at that address. Thank you. Uh, Miss Pinto, all right. If you don't get an email from me tonight, please remind me tomorrow, okay? You know, I'm like juggling all these different counters, but I got it right here, so I'll send that email and hopefully all right, they're going back and forth. And what was the bond amount? I'm sorry. Uh, 15000 15 thank you. All right. Position Judge, may I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Jaquan Mathis. All right. Uh, position 12, Bostick, 23. Wait a minute. 23 CP 216069, 131 days without on as of February the 9th, hijacking a motor vehicle first degree, and 13, 23 CP 215635, 131 days without indictment. There's a $2,500 split bond with, with possessions of firearm or knife during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies, theft by taking felony, purchase, possession, manufacture, distribution, sale of marijuana. Ms. Correa, it looks like jet bonding posted his, he's posted that $2,500 bond. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. The only one that's left is the remaining hijacking charge. Okay. So, and what, did pretrial come off of those other charges though after? No. So what occurred is that he had first appearance on the case that you just read out. And then uh, when his mother went to go bond him out, these additional warrants popped up. So he has been in continuous custody. He had, this is not a situation where he was out on bond committed a new offense and came back to the jail. Um, these were added warrants where he had another first appearance the following day after his mom tried to bond him out. All right. I just want to make sure so nothing all, nothing pops up on that. All right. Bostic, preach, bro. Only prior arrest. 
All right. Go ahead, Ms. Correa. Oh. That's Thank cool. you, Your Honor. Um, that is correct. Mr. Mathis only has one prior cycle. Um, he is 17 years old. The address you see reflected in, in Odyssey is a good address for him. That is the address he has had his entire life. Um, at the time of his arrest, he was attending Creekside High School. Of course, this, this arrest has derailed his education, but he is eager to return to school and to get his education back on track. Um, he was also working at the Crystals in East Point. Um, he was doing school. that in a part-time uh -huh. capacity in order to um, help support himself and his daughter. At this point, um, I believe his daughter would be about uh, six months old. Um, she's also here in the Metro Atlanta area, Your Honor. I um, mean, he has been involved in her, her life. Um, I have been in contact with his mother. As I mentioned, uh, she did uh, attempt to bail her son out when these additional warrants popped up. So at this stage, he has now been in continuous custody for 131 days in a no bond status that you see um, before you today. There was a, uh, he has had his preliminary hearing. He had his preliminary hearing back in, on March 15th in front of Judge Drake, where another charge was dismissed. Um, so at this time, Your Honor, I'm asking for you to set a bond on the charge before you. I'm asking for that bond to not to exceed $5,000. Thank you, Your All Honor. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Malkin. With two serious arrests at age 17 and the hijacking and what that necessarily involves because of the elements of the crime, the state requests a $50,000 bond for the hijacking. All right. No drugs. He's going to live in Conley, right, Miss? Um. Yes, let me look up. Let me just confirm where Creekside High School is. Is it still going to be Conley, Georgia, where you're going to live, sir? Yes, that's where that's his. Uh, that's the family address. The okay. Creek. All right. No drugs unless described. Yes. No alcohol. No weapons. Stay away from 3749 Main Street in College Park. No further contact with B E L E L. Last name Alwana A L W. Excuse me, A L A W N A. Have a monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule in the exact location you're going to be working. Also, sir, stay out of Fulton County unless you're for court or to see your lawyer. $40,000 good bond. Best no of luck to you, sir. Your Honor, um, so I looked about. it up. Creekside High School is in the Fairburn, South Fulton area. And then if we could also ask uh, for basic life necessities, such sure. as for his daughter. Basic life necessities, and he's going to go to that school, right? That is the intention, if, they, if they'll take him back, yes. All right. Well, he could go there for education, but he has to approve it as far as coming back to Fulton County. Because well, Conley's... A long way away from South Fulton. He's going to live in Conley. Conley's like okay. on uh, Moreland Avenue. I'm not sure of the logistics. I just know that that is the physical address where he resides. That's where he lives with his grandparents. I believe maybe his mother may be, may be living someplace else, and that's how he's enrolled in that, oh, okay. in that district. But that, right. that's just the information that I have. I got you. So court, lawyer, education, if he proves that he's enrolled, then he's going. But don't show up. If you're not going, then you can't go. $40,000. Best of luck to you, sir. And we can add basic life necessity. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ramona Townsend. All right. 15, Bostic 22, CP 209161. 379 days without indictment. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Possession of knife or firearm during the commission of certain felonies. $40,000 good bond as of February the 9th. A uh, uh, couple of felonies are old armed um, robbery in the 90s, 2018 financial ID fraud, one arrest for probation violation, one misdemeanor. Nothing further. All right. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Mr. Clayton. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Townsend is uh, 49 years old. He's a lifelong resident of the state of Georgia. Um, he has been in custody for over a year, um, I believe he's had two bond hearings in that time. Initially, the bond was set at forty-five thousand, and then reduced by your honor back in February to forty thousand. Um, Mr. Townsend um, is um, it has it has no ability to pay um, a bond that high. He um, we have um, gotten him housing and treatment at the Hope House. On Washington Street, if he is released, he would. That's where he would go to. Um, considering that this case has been um, without indictment um, 
for over a year at this point, we would ask the court to consider reducing his bond substantially to the amount of $10,000, which is an amount that um, is he may still not be able to make, but is at least a little bit more realistic in terms of um, the potential of him being able to post that bond. Right, go ahead, he shot the victim in this case, allegedly, so the state would request a $35,000 bond. All right, let's see, 20000 5000 5000 Best of luck to you, sir. Uh, let's see, stay away from 1940 Fisher Road, southeast. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an income on there paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment, and basic lives and necessities. You have to let the... Ankle monitoring company, no name of employer, proof of employment, scheduled, the exact location you're going to be working, and no further contact with Brandon LaFleur, L-E-F-L-O-R-E. -E. Best of luck to you, sir. And I've already placed that in my email to send to them about the number of cases that need to be. At least I got a couple of indicted this last thing. Your Honor, that concludes my business. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good evening. Johnny Norman. And Mr. Cho, you're on both of these? Oh, no, Cho is back. Look, who's back? Mr. Cho. <laughs> Where's Mr. Cho? Finding Mr. Cho. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cho. I, I hope. <laughs> are, you, are you on both the Johnny Norman cases? Where's Waldo? Yes, sorry. Oh, okay. All right, Johnny Norman. We got 10 and 11. 22 CP 211510, Johnny Norman, 291 days without indictment, $150,000 goods bond as of November the 21st, 2022, armed robbery, ag assault, possession of a knife or a farm during the commission of a felony. Position 11, 22 CP 211511, 291 days without indictment, $200,000 goods bond as of 11-21-22, armed robbery, ag assault, possession of a knife or a farm during the commission of a felony, and theft by taking felony. Breach, wrong. Three prior arrests, other open cases, 21 CP 203005, criminal trespass, carrying a weapon in school safety zone, 21 CP 203003, false statements, nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Chill. Uh Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, we are requesting a substantive reduction for both cases. Uh, Emphasizing to the court, Mr. Norman is innocent until proven guilty. And, uh, Judge, we are approaching the threshold where, uh, I'll just say it like this, 365 days without indictment would be presumptively prejudicial against my client's right to a speedy trial. Um, Judge, Mr. Norman denies these charges. He is Fulton County resident in the case ending in 511, a complaining witness claims that the person who uh, complaining witness who made these allegations described the individual um, as someone who was five foot four. Um, as the jail booking screen indicates, uh, Mr. Norman is five foot 11. Uh, judge, we are asking um, for a substantive reduction at this time and to please add him to the list of cases that are um, in need of extra attention, nothing further. All right. Is he going to live in Fulton County? Fulton County, that's correct. All right, go ahead, Mr. Malkin. The state requests a hundred thousand dollar bond on both cases. Total, right? In aggregate, both. Oh, of them yes, total. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Twenty thousand. On position 10, 20,000, 20,000, 10,000. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 352 University Avenue. I think that's all over there near Clark, Atlanta. So stay away from all the black historical college campuses over there. Can't go on any of them. No further contact with Zaina Pouncey, P-O-U-N-C-E-Y. You're going to have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Also, basic life necessities. That's 20000 20000 10000 Position 11. 20000 20000 5000 5000 
20,000, 20,000, 5,000, 5,000. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 1600 Prior Road Southwest. No further contact with Jaron, J A accent R O N, Gale, G A Y L E. You have an income monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. You have to supply that to the ankle monitoring company and to your lawyer. And also basic life necessities. So that's 20,000, 20,000, 5,000, 5,000. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. And the name is included. I just did it. About Tobias Jackson. All right, Mr. Jackson, position eight and nine, Bostick, 22 CP 211293, 299 days without indictment, criminal damage property, second degree, $3,000 good bond as of December the 8th. Then I got 23 CP 216438, 299 ooh, nine days, but not on this count without indictment, arson in the first degree. There's a $5,000 good bond as of February the 22nd, 2023. Free. Wrong. Extensive criminal history, 42 prior rates, at least 10 felonies, history of death by shoplifting, FTAs, two prior arrests for probation violation, prior arrest for prior conviction for aggravated assault. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Cho. I, I, okay, th this happens all the time. They, they say this guy's been there almost 300 days without indictment, and I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling for him. I'm like, what if he didn't do it or whatever? Then the next thing, 10 prior felonies. And I'm like, I, I just, I can't get myself to care. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Jackson's been in custody for a while. We acknowledge that the bonds are uh, close to as low as they'll go. Uh, we are asking the court to consider UJR. Uh, Mr. Jackson is 45, has 10th grade education, and has his GED. He's a lifelong resident of um, Georgia, and he's a Fairburn resident, Your Honor. Um, Judge, I will just emphasize that the new case was at 901 Rice Street. Uh, per the warrant, it says that uh, deputy um, at the jail or detention officer at the jail stomped out a small fire. That is uh, what this uh, charge is all about for uh, the second position on the calendar for Mr. Jackson. Um, ultimately, Judge, we are asking for a reduction in bond at this time. Um, he has been in jail for some time now. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Malcolm. The state would request a $2,000 and $4,000 bond. All right. Position eight, got a $2,000 good bond. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 111 Cone Street in Atlanta, Georgia. That's all Holiday Inn hotels. Like I said, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. $2,000 good bond. Position nine, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No flammable materials used to start fires. So you can't walk around with a bottle of gasoline, matches, lighters, things like that. Ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Also, basic life necessities. $4,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Uh, your Honor, uh, that concludes my business. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Have a good evening. And thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Debbie Malkin. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cho. Good night. Good night. Richard Williams. Peace out, Cho. All right. All right, Ms. Kinnebrew. So this is a couple of positions there, boss. Take 20. 21 CP 202269. 205 days without indictment. Has that have they came off of that bond? It was a thirty-five thousand dollar bond. Oh, I'm sorry, it was no bond on this one. Wait a minute. It's a fifteen thousand. Blah, 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 excuse me, $15,200 good bond, but Alpha Bonding, it looked like it had posted something on this, Ms. Kennebrew, has it? So the only position that I saw that was revoked was position 269, so I believe that's position 20, yes, so this the one is, that, this one has been revoked. All right, that's okay, but has he made bond on the other ones? No, Your Honor. Okay. He needs so, bond redu reduction in all three Okay, because so somebody came off of it because of the alpha bonding. Okay. All right, 21 CP 202269. Is it a chart? I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Williams, 205 days without indictment. Willful obstruction of a law enforcement officer by use of threats or violence. Removal or attempt to removal of a weapon from a public official. Simple battery against a peace officer. No bond as of January the 9th. 21 CP 202273, 205 days without indictment, ag assault, possession of firearm by a convicted felon. There's a $20,000 good bond as of June the 16th, 2022. 
22 CP 213 867 205 days without indictment. There is a $8,500 good bond as of 228.23 for a VGCSA possession of controlled substance in Schedule 1 or 2. Possession of marijuana, I'm excuse me, yeah, possession, sale, manufacture, distribution of marijuana, and possession of drug related objects. Free. Ah. In regards to this defendant, 13 prior arrests, other open case 20 SC1 set. 6819 aggravated assault firearm during Coulton the third. Oh no, he's on probation for that. 12, 9, 20, six months confinement, six years, six months probation. Also 19 SC 169 119, 12, 9, 20, three years probation. And 20 SC 179 859 drug related objects, cocaine sentence. Uh 12, 9, 20, nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Kinnebrew. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Williams has been in custody for 205 days without an indictment. His current bond on one case, as you stated, was 8500 Another one, he doesn't have a bond. And then the last one is a $20,000 bond. He is 25 years old. He does have a valid address here in Fulton County where he can reside. He did graduate from high school. He is the proud father of two children. He was working at Family Dollar um, and a food vending prior to being arrested. Um, on one case, he was arrested in November 9th of 2022. He had a preliminary hearing March 3rd of 2023, and his case still has yet to be indicted. Um, so on position 20, we're asking for a bond not to exceed $10,000. On position 21, we're asking for a bond not to exceed $10,000. And on position 22, we're asking for a $5,000 bond, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Malcolm. Thank you. The state would consent to... Ms. Kennebrew's request for position 22, the $5,000 bond. On position 21, the state requests a $15,000 bond. And on position 20, which is currently no bond, the state requests a $20,000 bond. All right. A total of $40,000. All right. Position 20. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Officer Goss, G-O-S-S. -S Brad Smooth. He leads with the one he can... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he leads with the one thing he can agree with and, and then and then drops the hammer. Unless it's in their official capacity. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Also, ba basic life necessities. Stay away from 2471 Old National Highway. highway that's travel, all travel lodge, hotels, motels, whichever it's called there. That ankle monitor is paid for by the county. If it's got a hole, sir, there'll be 48 hours for you to have that ankle monitor placed on your ankle once you get released from your hold. So I've got 5,000, 10,000, and 5,000. 5,000, 10,000, 5,000. On position 21. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Tiaka, T-I-A-K-K-A, -K -K -A, Hammonds, H-A-M-M-O-N-D-S. You have the ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Stay away from 1991 DeLow Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'll do uh, 10,000 and 4,000. Uh, position 22. So we got 3,000, 2,000 at UJR jail. 3,000, 2,000 UJR jail. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 3749 Campbellton Road. They also have income on their paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you provide the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, exact location, you'll be working. Best of luck to you, sir. And I put that in my email already. Thank you, Your Honor. And that concludes my business. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Have a good evening. You as well. Well, there you have it. There you have it. I, I, I'm running out of what I had in the, in the video there. With the, the, well, ooh, what's Cummery saying here? I'm 4'11". Four, four and, and a half. <laughs> oh, 
Always good. You know what? I I, I did uh, Judge Simpson video this morning. It was fantastic because I haven't seen Judge Simpson or Judge Manning for a while. And today was good. I got I got to catch up with uh, with a couple of my favorites. With a couple of my favorites. That that call was a lot longer, but I didn't grab it all. That's what I had. That's what I had. I think I had a little bit more, but I think it was it was going to stop mid mid middle of the ne- of the next one. But there, there was lots of fun. And thanks to Natalie D, I think I'm going to have a fun PPO tomorrow. I've, I've seen bits of that, and it, it, it looks very promising. I haven't seen all of it. I haven't seen all of it. Natalie tells me it gets worse. Today was yeah, – we, we've had a couple with happy endings, lately, but this, one, this was a different scenario. The, 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 the call was the way it usually is. It's just – yeah, you know, you got a woman who says she shot herself to to try to bust a guy out of jail. It it, it takes a lot to get worse than that. It, it, <laughs> and we started with that. We started on a low. We st- we started on a low. Oh, good good times as always. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I will see you all soon. <laughs>